Morning all, it is uh, Friday the 4th of November and uh, today I'm going to do and probably repeat myself a little bit uh, just because I, I, I don't know that there's a way to get this this uh, thought process out enough. It's something I got to keep pushing, keep talking about, keep screaming. Uh, every phone call, every video, every everything right now has to be pointed towards this because there's so much of it coming at me. There's such a large percentage of the lenders out there. They're pushing the arms. There's just a large percent of the sellers of real estate calling and saying, hey, do you guys have an arm product that we could help that's going to help us sell the sell the real estate? Anything they can get to make it get a little bit cheaper and make a person feel a little bit more secure those first few years. I'm telling you guys, I'm going to keep preaching it to you. You're setting yourself up for some potential problems. I can't be 100% because I don't know the future. Because I don't know the future, I can say that every damn person who's peddling this crap, they don't know it either. And what they're doing is going strictly off the hope that you can get into this house, get that really low payment. By that time it's sold and they're gone. They don't, they're nowhere near you at that point. And you have to deal with the fact that is the market going to get better? Is the rates going to go down where you can refinance this property, right? And get yourself in a similar or better rate. The other thing is, is what's happening to the housing market? There's so much speculation what's going on with the housing market and what will happen to the housing market. We don't know. The only thing that I have when people say, hey, is the housing market going to soften? Are we going to go into a bubble? Are we going to have a crash again? I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but let's explore both thought processes. I have one thought process is we have 5.2 million units short for the demand we have right now. That we do know. Now, how that's going to play out, I can't say. Right now, there's not enough building going on. There's not enough uh, supply to continue the building. The building permits are down. Builders do not want to get involved. They're worried about the market. So... I'm thinking that's going to keep us strong to an extent because we don't have the have the units to to uh, to 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 have oversupply, therefore bring bring the uh, cost down or bring the prices down, therefore influencing values. But they are not building for a reason too, so we have to think about that. So let's yeah. say we have a situation that happens that does influence the the value of these homes negatively, significantly. Let's say it happens over the next couple two or three years. Everybody's saying, hey, the rate's going to come down in a couple, two or three years. Okay, we talked about before, come down from what? If they're going to come down in two years, they got to go up still. So they'll probably keep climbing. There has been speculation from very, very, very smart people out there saying we could expect possibly 10% rates by, by next year. Next year is two months away. So if we're going to see that and then it continues in, let's say it's 11%, and then they start to come down. Well, they come down to say 9 well, whoever said that they're going to come down in two years is 100% right if that is the case. But here's the problem. That's a lot higher than the rate we have today. So if you held out for that time frame, you're missing out on the opportunity to have today with a much lower rate, potentially a lower priced house. Now, there is also the risk that the houses could go negative, right? The pricing could go the other direction because of where rates are heading because we have been so damn spoiled for so damn long. And let me talk about, you know, I'll get into spoiled here in a minute. We've been extremely spoiled for the last 13 years with rates that have never been showed, never showed up in history before. Now we have these amazing rates and we think that that's how it should be. The rates where they are today is where they should be and where they probably would have been. In fact, they, they're probably even lower than they would have been had, had quantitative easing never happened. So just know you're still in an amazing spot. But let's say housing does drop as a result. It happened before. And the prices of the homes you buy today decline in the future. Well, you're in a position where you forced yourself to refinance because you got that three-year, five-year, seven-year arm. Now you're trying to refine. The value of the home is not high enough to refinance. You got to bring money to the table just to get a refinance done. You got to drop the price of the, the loan on your house. Think about that. You have no, there's so many things that are out there that could, that could hit you negatively, and you might not be able to do that refinance, and you back yourself in the corner. I will repeat what Warren Buffett said. The 30-year fixed is the greatest financial instrument out there because it's a one-way bet. You're betting that the rates are going to go up. That's it. And if they go down, all you do is refinance. Who gives a shit? But if they go up, you're right and you're protected. Protect yourself. Don't get suckered into these arms. Guys, I can't stress it enough. I've seen this happen. I had so many people that I knew that did the arms and then when the market softened, they couldn't refinance. Man, foreclosures, all those foreclosures, many of them happened from the arms. Don't let yourself get pulled into this crap, guys. You control what you can control for as long as you control it, period. That's how it is. Now, I mentioned something about being, being uh, uh, spoiled. Don't allow the rates to influence you to do something stupid. There's a lot of people that got so spoiled about the rates. We're quoting somewhere in the high threes, 3.6, 3.7%. And they were saying, well, but this bank over here is going to do a 10-year fixed with a 20-year amortization. They're going to do a quarter or three-eighths better. 
Guess what they got right now? No, they've got a probably a three and an eighth or three and a quarter of a 10 year fixed on a 20 year AM. And now market's going all to hell and the rates are going up. They were convinced of that because they were told that the rates will always stay where they are. Are the rates where they are? I can't be I can't be wrong all the time here, guys. That I told them they're going to get themselves back in the corner. And now they're back into a damn corner. I've talked to a few of them. They wish they didn't do it. I'm telling you now, don't back yourself in the corner with this arm. So I'm going to stop on that for right now. And let's go into the market and see what's happening out there. So I drew some drew some lines here to take a look at. This is the this is our resistance. This is our ceiling. Here's our support. We have a wide range where we're bouncing from what I'm understanding. This is what I looked at a few different, few different uh, places to get these uh get these ranges to play in. That's a Big wide range for us to have influence as far as rates going uh, positive here, negative here. We're kind of in the middle of the trend line. We do have that negative trend line that was pulling us down for the last little while. It could also literally be drawn from here to here as well. So we can see this this uh, this trend line continuing in this. We had that channel previously we talked about. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, guys, there's a lot more negative influence than positive influence here. And as a result of that, I'm not convinced that things are not going to get a little bit worse. We do have a reprieve right now. I take advantage of this reprieve to lock if you've got the option to and not put yourself in a position to wait and think it's going to get better. I don't believe better is... is um, is, is something we're going to see a lot of. I think worse is something we're going to see more of than better. So take advantage of those days where it's slightly better. You now it's locking in for that 30 years. Don't get sucked into the arms. I'm telling you, it's going to come back to bite you five years from now. I think it's going to hurt you. I think we have a greater chance of hurting than us helping. And if I'm wrong, you can refinance anyway. So talk to you guys soon. Thank you.